Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things, saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today.
thousand generations in your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you in a thousand generations in your family and their children and their children and their children may his favor Good morning. My name is Subash Ganguly, and this is my wife, Ethna. We'd like to welcome you to today's worship service of the Hamilton Church of Christ. We've been members of this congregation for 14 years now and family group leaders for the last several years. Our family group, which meets uh, on West Mountain, consists of church members and some visitors, and it's been a real blessing for us during the lockdown. Courtesy of Zoom and other technologies, it's allowed us uh, to maintain human contact, which is so often lacking during lockdown, to encourage one another and to be involved in each other's lives. We hope that you enjoy today's service and the message which Danny will bring us from God's word. Ethna is now going to read a scripture from Isaiah 43, verses 1 and 2. As you listen to it, remember that while it was originally addressed to the nation of Israel, Galatians 4.28 tells us that as Christians, we are now considered to be a spiritual Israel and children of the promise. Um, but now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by, my, by name, sorry. I have summoned you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the river, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. There are many things I like about this passage of scripture. Not only did God create us, but he has redeemed us. He has purchased us back. God calls us by our name and tells us that we are his. In addition, he says that if we pass through waters, they won't sweep over us. And when we walk through fire, we won't be burned. In other words, when we go through times of adversity, God will be with us and protect us. I find that very reassuring. Please join me now as we pray. 
Father, we come before you. We thank you for this day, for your love and for your grace shown to us through Jesus Christ. Bless and guide Danny as he leads us in a sermon from your word and be with our church members as well. May the message convict them and draw us all closer to you and please continue to protect us in the days, weeks and months ahead. These things we pray, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Enjoy the service. Good morning everyone thank you for joining and as you can see we're outside it's a beautiful day it's a beautiful week actually and we intend to uh, enjoy this summer much as we can 
go outside walk having spiritual retreat and and uh, just enjoy this uh, natural cathedral that yeah. God is uh, providing us. Today we'll uh, start a two-part series um, about the expression being the uh, hands and feet of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Today we'll focus on what it means to be the, the hands of Jesus. Yes, and uh, there's this African saying, uh, if you think you're too small to make a difference, Try spending the night in a closed room with a mosquito. Mm. <laughs> it's so true. We have had uh, many different sleepless nights. I remember one in particular when we were in Haiti about 10 years ago, and uh, we had a choice to either be really hot and cover ourselves with a sheet and no mosquitoes get us, or take the sheet off, be cool, but be attacked. <laughs> we had totally a sleepless night. So when I think of that, um, that saying, it's so true. It doesn't matter how small you are, you can still make a great impact. Yeah. Actually, God loves to, to use ordinary people to accomplish extraordinary things. You think about David, the little boy killing a giant and later became king of Israel. Or you think about uh, Mary, that little teenage girl chosen by God to give birth to the Messiah. Yeah. And Peter, a simple fisherman, uh, was chosen to establish the early church and him and his friends completely changed the world. Mm. And I believe there's no difference with us today. I believe poverty, racism, injustice can be changed by ordinary people just like you and me. Yeah. Imagine God's vision for our world is like a huge puzzle, you know, made up of many pieces. And, you know, just even this small piece of a puzzle, it looks pretty insignificant by itself, but it's amazing that when you put them all together, it's a masterpiece, it's wonderful. And uh, God has created each one of us like this little piece, but with a unique contribution. And, uh, you know, one of the most you know, common mistakes I think that we can make is to believe that we're too small. Mm. We're insignificant to really make a difference. And maybe it's like we're not rich enough or we're not smart enough, not beautiful enough, not skilled enough, not spiritual enough. And, you know, to really make a difference. But it's not true. And, and I, I even think of Moses, you know, how he's like, oh, God, please, you know, get somebody else. And I know I can feel that way sometimes. But we, even though, you know, whoever we are, we can make a great difference. Yeah. And, and uh, in the New Testament, there's a story of Jesus feeding the 5,000. It's found in the four Gospels, actually. And I think it's a, a very inspiring story. So today, we'll, we'll use that story through the different Gospel. And I think Jesus is showing us something very important. Mm -hmm. Underwhelming resources in face of overwhelming challenges. So the first point we want to talk today it's see like Jesus. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how differently Jesus and his disciples view the same problem, the mm -hmm. same situation. So uh, we're going to read in uh, Mark, the Gospel of Mark chapter 6 verse 35. We will see first of all the disciple how they saw only a large problem. By this time, it was late in the day, so his disciples came to him. This is a remote place, they said, and it's already very late. Send the people away so they can go to the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. So we see clearly that the disciples see uh, a huge problem mm -hmm. uh, facing them. Interestingly, Jesus saw the needs of the people and especially the opportunity to, to make a difference. Mm -hmm. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. So Jesus' uh, disciple, the disciple of Jesus' heart here is, are, is very uh, clear. Like, Jesus, please help us remove the problem. This is too big for us. We don't want to see it. We, we don't want to feel it. But Jesus is uh, training and inviting his disciple to see to mm. see the needs, to see the opportunity, and actually he's going to call them to, to, to action. We'll see this in a moment. Uh, there, there's a, a man that inspired so, so much when I was a teenager, a young adult, Nelson Mandela. Mm. And one thing I appreciate of him is, is, is perseverance and his vision into uh, bringing a change 
to to his country. I remember doing some work and research, and and I thought it was uh, simply impossible that situation forever would stay the same. And uh, Nelson Mandela said, "I would like to read that quote. It always seems impossible until it's done. It always seems impossible until it's done. And this is what we're going to see today with the scripture we'll study together." So let's continue to read the story and see our second point we want to talk about today. Act like Jesus. Jesus trained his disciple to become the hands of God. We read in uh, Matthew 14, verse 16, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. I love and I appreciate uh, Jesus so much. Like he understand where his disciples are at, their heart, uh, they are uh, exasperated, they are panicked perhaps, they are faithless about this situation. In their mind they are facing an impossible task. But Jesus is bringing them back to the need. They do not need to go away. And right after this he's adding these words, you give them something to, to eat. And by doing, by doing this, uh, in some ways, Jesus was uh, testing his disciples. He knew that they will have to process that information. And that's what we read in Mark 6. They said to him, that would take more than half a year's wages. Are we to go and spend that much on bread and give it to them to eat? I love that passage. Yeah. You know, it just showed them how much they felt uh, completely overwhelmed with the problem and the task ahead of them. Yeah, and I appreciate Jesus, you know, he didn't fall into that same trap that the disciples were in, thinking, oh no, how, how much is it gonna cost? And really thinking about the size of the problem. Uh, he didn't ask, you know, about the magnitude or the strategy or even the practicality of the situation, but he only focused on how much they had to offer. You know, how many loaves do you have? He asked, go and see. Here is a boy with five small loaves and two small fish. But how far will they go among so many? You know, once again, the disciples were like, ah! And I must confess, I, I absolutely can be that way. Um, you know, sometimes I have an amazing, passionate, visionary husband, and sometimes he'll come up with these wonderful ideas and dreams. And I can be like, okay, so that's great, but you know, how much is it going to cost? How much, how, how much time will it take? And I just go, you know, over and over just about the task and forgetting and remembering Jesus's heart. Okay, what do we have to offer? Only five loaves and bread and two fish. Bring them here to me. Mm -hmm. Bring them mm -hmm. here to me. And th this is showing something so important. Jesus showed his disciple what God can do with even the smallest smallest gift offered mm -hmm. with faith and and that's really key and important here you read it and see so many details in the gospel of matthew 14 verse 19 we read and he jesus directed the people to sit down on the grass i love that and that's another thing jesus with his hands is he's directing people and i don't know in israel back then like for how, how can you find a piece of grass for 5,000 yeah. people plus it's it's not that obvious but but he found and he's directing people on the grass why to make them feel comfortable mm -hmm. let's keep reading taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven he gave thanks and broke the loaves then he gave them to the disciple and the disciples gave them to the people this is uh, amazing to see and do you see the miracle here mm -hmm. confronted with an overwhelming problem Jesus didn't ask the disciple to do the impossible he asked only for them to bring what they had yeah. he, he said you know go check it out what 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 can 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 you find and just bring it here and I think I, I love and I appreciate this so much because anybody can do this mm -hmm anybody can find something and just bring it forward to God with faith and see God doing the rest he then uh, Jesus multiplied the small offering and use it to do the impossible God never asks us to give what we do not have 
but he cannot use what we will not give willing to give by faith mm -hmm. you know so jesus trained his disciple to become his hands and by by asking them to go and see to to bring them here what they found and 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 by calling his disciple uh to feed people you give them something to to, to eat jesus trained his disciple to becomes to become literally his hands mm -hmm. Let's conclude this amazing story with our third point, which is give like Jesus. Give like Jesus. We'll read in uh, Matthew 14, verse 20, how the story ends. They all ate and were satisfied, and the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. Just love it. 12 back baskets of leftover. 12 is it's not a, a an accident for the 12 apostle right and I'm wondering was it a, a reminder of their lack of faith in the first place I don't know there's a quote of Anne Frank I love so much she says once no one has ever become poor by giving I, I think it's so deep and so true and I think it's more what Jesus had in mind when they came back with their full 12 basket yeah. to remind them listen guys you don't need to worry just just give just bring and meet the needs and uh you'll see you'll never become poor by by doing this and you think about jesus first of all of course when he finished his life he he was not a, a rich man with a lot of physical possession but can you say that he was poor that he he, we took him pity no I don't think so he was the richest man and he's calling us to do the the same thing mm. now think for a moment the the little boy mm. can you imagine he, he came that day with his little lunch I don't know prepared by his mom maybe his parents and and when the needs arise he, he was willing to give it away mm. to, to offer it can you imagine how he felt after to see multitude of people being fed just from his little piece of bread and and fish and i think as my wife mentioned at at first like he he was that little piece of puzzle uh totally insignificant uh, that day didn't wake up and and didn't realize that him by putting forward offering what he had in his hand uh would complete this mm. incredible miracle of god i believe when we as christian are willing to lay our little piece down on the table uh, God can do amazing things yeah. and, and that's what Paul reminded the disciple in book of Acts uh, verse uh, chapter 20 verse 35 it is more blessed to give than to receive I totally believe this and this mm -hmm. is the lessons there's so many lessons but this is the the big lesson that God wanted to, to give and share with his uh, disciple and with us today uh, bring whatever we have yeah. to God and God will do the rest give it it give it also to god with faith mm -hmm. it's really important god is not afraid of great numbers and of great needs yeah. uh, we need to stop calculating with our logic at yeah. times we just need to trust god and surrender to to him so many of you may know about our project in haiti oasis haiti and uh, it was eye-opening. After you know, really doing the calculations, we realized that in just one year, we fed over 50,000 meals. Mm -hmm. I was like, what? But yes, and, and just to see, you know, there's no way that we would have believed five years ago when we started our project that we would be doing this today. And beside the food, um, we provided clothes, books, um, medical and social care, education for you know over 100 underprivileged children. Uh, we've provided more than 20 jobs, uh, which has really brought a lot of hope to to the community. Um, we've just even helped people with the microloans, you know, that we've provided. Um, and you know, many of you probably remember there was a, a Hurricane Matthew about uh, five years ago. And we rebuilt things that were destroyed, you know, by the hurricane. Uh, we rebuilt homes and uh, water wells, church buildings, church buildings, latrines. So it, it's just so encouraging to see that it's true. It doesn't matter 
what we can bring, God will multiply it. And again, just a huge thank you to all of you, you know, who have contributed. You were part of that miracle. Absolutely. There's a proverb I love. I would like to read to you. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is your power to act. I love it um, because, you know, we have the power to act. We, we may not have the power to, to change the world at once, but we have the power to act. That's what we saw through the, the, the story and the, the teaching of Jesus today. And God is encouraging us to, 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 to share and, and to give uh, for those who are in need. And, and as we just saw, you know, as anyone became poor by giving, by serving, I, I don't think so. Every time I was, I was asked to, to give or an opportunity to, to serve, I always felt much better after, so encouraged. And I look at our lives today, oh my goodness, we're, we're, we're so blessed. Let's wrap, wrap up here and uh, conclude uh, by reading another quote from uh, Gandhi this time. He said uh, once, be the change that you want to see the world to see in the world mm. be the change that you want to see in the world this is the key we we have to be the change yeah. that's what jesus taught his disciple you know we need to become what we'd like to see the the rest of the world to to, to become and do like we look back in just a few years what what god did through just a handful of people can you imagine like thousands of people millions of people uh dedicated to the the the, the way we we were i think god can accomplish amazing amazing thing and that's the vision we need to 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 catch yeah as jesus taught us let's search for people's needs first and let our heart be moved and then you will figure it out the, the right thing to do and don't worry if you don't know what to do. Just just see, search the, 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 the needs. Let's be moving your heart and God will guide you. Yeah. And it's great because we have an opportunity. Uh, actually, in the month of June, we will be having a uh, HOPE project. It's called HOPE in Action. And it'll be from coast to coast all over Canada. And uh, we did, you know, search the needs. And uh, we see two of them in particular. One is the food bank, which we continue to do and will continue to do. But also, um, every summer, we... Um, raise money to to make knapsacks to put together knapsacks for underprivileged children mm -hmm. and we get that help through good shepherd so um you know there's a growing number of uh, families in need uh, a lot of single moms uh, mental illness and even yeah. with the pandemic you know a lot of people have gone through hard times and so we want to be able to have this hope project and uh, come to them and to really help with that and uh, again, bringing us back to that piece of the puzzle, you know, when you make that decision to to really love God and really over let that overflow and help other people, you know, we are part of that a wonderful puzzle that when we come together, it's beautiful and it's amazing what God can do. So um, I really see even already how people, you know, have been giving groceries or getting groceries for people who can't do it, um, who are maybe too compromised. Um, you know, to, for your neighbors, bringing meals, bringing gifts to your co-workers, even, you know, just calling somebody up or praying together or asking somebody, you know, what can I do for you? All these ways you can be that piece of the puzzle that creates such uh, beauty and, and really to see what God can do with that. Amen. Mm -hmm. Sounds exciting. Yeah. <laughs> To be uh, the, hands of, yes, of the Jesus. hands of Jesus. Well, we know being the hands of Jesus will require for each one of us to, to get out of our comfort zone, yeah. uh, out of our safe Christian circles mm. at times, and engage with the, the real world. Yeah. Um, and, and I think it will be a great opportunity to, to help people to, to see God yeah. through our serving and, and get to, to know God and even build a relationship with uh, God. Jesus knew this from the beginning. He knew when he started his ministry and calling disciple, he, he wouldn't be long in this world, like three years, five years, two years. Uh, but I knew that uh, that it wouldn't be too long. He had a short time. 
And even in the last meal before he got arrested, he said, it's better for me to leave. Mm -hmm. and, and he said all these things because he knew that uh, after he's going to leave this world, that we will become the hands of Jesus, that we all together multiplying serve the needs around. And Jesus was really excited about this. He was thrilled about this. And for me, that's the, the power of the uh, possible. Yeah. Everyone can do this. And together, when we come together to do this, it's so, so powerful. Let's, let's be the change. Let's be uh, the image of Jesus by uh, serving and being his, in his hands today. As we saw today, uh, let's see like Jesus. Let's mm -hmm. act like Jesus. Let's give like Jesus. This is the essence of uh, following uh, Jesus, the, the essence of our uh, discipleship. Let's be inspired how God will multiply our small resources yeah. to make a big impact. Amen. Thank you. Have a great week. Bye. We're excited to be holding our first annual Hope in Action fundraiser on Saturday, June 19th. All across our nation, supporters of Hope Worldwide Canada will get active in order to raise funds and meet needs in their local communities. Our question for you is, why and how will you get active? I'm helping needy children affected by natural disasters by dancing. Bonjour, je m'appelle Manuel et je cours pour l'insécurité alimentaire. We're playing video games to help the homeless. We, we are, are building, building our, our community, community by walking. Pintando, ayudo a los necesitados. I'm doing lunges to help feed the homeless. Hey, my name is Ruben and I play basketball for marginalized youths. A bike to help the orphans and knees. I'm doing stairs to help kids in foster kids. I'm helping addressing food insecurity in my community by knitting a blanket. I'm doing 100 jumping jacks for mental health awareness. I'm supporting kids in foster care by painting. At Hope Worldwide Canada, we believe that action is necessary to help others. Please join your local chapter in raising funds and getting active on June 19th in order to bring hope and change the lives of those in need.